So what I'm going to do right now is I'm actually going to turn the podium over to another gentleman who I briefly talked about at the very beginning, who I've known for 15 years. Um, he is a uh, real estate professional. Um, just like with Jason, the, his actual, um, uh, I guess you could say his repertoire includes lots of testimonials, positive reviews from people that have used this service. Um, he really has a personal touch. He's a good family man. He's a homeowner himself too. If I remember correctly, Alex, you have two houses already, right? Yep, correct. And, and when I met you 15 years ago, you were this, you still look so young. This, you know, Jay, you and I are losing our hair. This guy, Alex, is going to be 70 one day and still have a full head of hair. I'm jealous. It's not fair. I don't like you anymore, Alex. No, but all joking aside, he really knows his stuff. Getting into a house is a lot more than just a down payment. So he's going to talk about the market because it's cuckoo. I remember, I think, Alex, you got your house for like around 200, 225,000. It must be worth 800,000 by now. So, yes. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to turn it over, guys. Please give us our special attention here to Mr. Alex McCauley, and I'm going to give him the host uh, spotlight here. One second here. There we go. You are the host now. Okay. Can you hear me? Absolutely. Perfect. Thank you, Michael, and thank you, uh, Jason. Such a good introduction from you guys. Uh, first of all, uh, to those who don't know me, my name is Alex Makale. Um, I am a realtor for the Century 21 Leading Edge. Uh, I've been doing this for uh, like almost 12 years now. I'm a very good friend of uh, Michael Kasapian. I know Michael for just like what he said, 15 years now, we used to work together. As a matter of fact, he was the one that gave me my first job opportunity at IT, at uh, Sorok Technology, if you do uh, remember, uh, which ended up to be a not so promising job for me. And for a good reason. Um, that shaped me um, who I was today as a person. Um, and I always tell this to uh, Michael that uh, how thankful I am uh, for the gratitude and for the, uh, and for the experience. And that's why I'm here today. Uh, when he needs somebody to speak about uh, real estate, I show up. So thank you, Michael, for, have, uh, for being here, for having me here. You are so uh, welcome. So uh, tonight I'm going to talk about three things very uh, quickly. I'm, I'm going to try to not to bore you guys with this uh, information. Uh, and you can ask me a question after. Uh, there are three things that I'm going to talk about. Number one is um, the home buying process. Um, I suppose that um, a majority of people here will be a first-time home buyer, if not like already one. Number two uh, is that what are the requirements for you to buy a house? And number three, I'm going to talk uh, 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 quickly what is happening in the uh, real estate market and what my predictions going forward. And number four, the last but not least, I'm going to talk about what is it that I do and how I can help you in making your dreams come true when it comes to home buying, okay? So number one, what are the home buying process? So uh, whenever I sit down with a potential client uh, is that the first thing that I would do first is that I, I, I sit down with them and I figure out what is it that they want and uh, they uh, needed help with. And I go through all these uh, six uh, buying step uh, process um, uh, and I identify where they are in the process. And I'm not going to talk about what these are, the six home buying process, but number one of them is basically understanding um, your needs and wants. So why is it so important? Um, it's very important in uh, uh, today because uh, if you cannot make a concise decision right on the spot, the chances are by the time you come home from a showing a property, the house is sold or you're in the mercy of a bidding war. And that's what the reality now of uh, being in the uh, real estate and that's how, the, how quick the uh, real estate exchange hands. And um, um, you know, a property will get sold as it hits in the market. So for, uh, for example, if there's husband and wife, uh, one spouse may want a four bedroom house, the other spouse may want a three bedroom house, uh, one spouse may want a house closer to, to a Toronto, the other one might want a house, a nicer house in Whitby. So one spouse might wants a closer proximity to, uh, to uh, work uh, location and the, and the other one may want closer to uh, or okay to a uh, commute. So somehow, somehow you guys have to find a middle ground on uh, where you can uh, a, co a compromise in, in order for you to make a quick decision. Um, I've seen people sometimes that comes to me venting about how their realtor is not helping them to buy a house and they have been looking for months and months, two months, three months, six months, one year, and they still haven't found a house. So, uh, and the uh, real uh, problem is that is not really the uh, realtor, but themselves. 
So I identify the problem first right off the bat. And I tell my clients first that if you don't find a house within 30 days after I give you a green light, the chances are three things. One, you're not following my process. Two, your expectation is way above your head. And number three is that you're basically not, not looking. So I send it back in the, uh, in the uh, drawing board. Okay. So uh, number two, uh, what are the requirements for you to buy a house? So these are basically your uh, 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 finances that we just talked about. So right off the bat, there are three things that any lenders will, uh, 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 like will look for when, whenever you're applying for a, uh, for a mortgage. Number one is your income. Number two is credit score. And number three is your down payment. And all these three things needs to go in a hand in hand. If any one of them goes off, off track, that the chances are your, your application will fold, okay? So income. If you are um, employed, you have to be, be working for at least one year in the company and they are more likely to use the three years at the average. So for example, if you have a 2019 um, income of 100K, 2018 of 80K, and the year bef before that is a 50K, they would most likely to use at the average, which is the, uh, at the middle. So if you have, if that number is low, right off the bat, you have a problem. So same, same goes with a self-employed, a self they would look for a T1, uh, for uh, employed is T is T four, um, so for your information, uh, there are about fifty different lenders out there that are willing to take your business, um, and we only know about five of them, which is uh, I I think it's TD, Scotia, Royal Bank, CIBC, Bank of Mo uh, Bank of Montreal, right, and the rest of them we don't know uh, unless we have an access to a mortgage broker. So each and every one of of these uh, lender have a different uh, uh, criteria. So, um, so, so who do you know? Um, so depending on who do you know, the chances are your files will go smoothly, okay? Down payment. Uh, at the minimum, uh, the, the requirements is 5% five, is 5 down for being a first time home and at 20% down if, uh, if you have a less than 20% down, you have to pay a CHMC. So if you don't know what the 5% uh, five, five or the 20% uh, is, you just uh, multiply what the uh, purchase price is against your, your uh, the, the five five percent or the twenty percent, and that's how you get your uh, your down payment. Now, with us Filipino, okay, I get it. We have problem with the down with the down, uh, the down payment. It's always been our uh, problem. So there are many ways for us to acquire a down payment. And the fastest way to go through it to acquire a down payment is through RRSP. You can use your cash, RRSP, TFSA, or gift money. But the rules is you cannot use a borrowed money for a down payment, although there's a ways around it, okay? RRSP, as of 2019 um, of March, uh, you can use up to a 35K now for each one, providing that that RRSP is within the RSP for uh, uh, 90 days. So let's expand this a little bit, uh, this, uh, this uh, RSP. Um, if you wanna borrow money um, and you wanna put it into RSP, uh, you, you gotta do it in such a way that it doesn't compromise your credit uh, ratio because there's no point of view, uh, you wanna buy a house and, you're, uh, and you wanna borrow money but your uh, credit score will get tainted. Um, so you gotta do it with a certain a limitation. So there, so income and down and down payment. Um, there's a ways around it. But if you mess up on your credit score, just like what uh, the other guy have have said, that uh, you're done. You have to have at the minimum of a 650 beacon score. If not, they are trying to push now for 680. Um, now, the beauty about RSP is that you can use an RSP to buy a house for a first-time home buyer. In some cases, you can use it for secondary homeowner. Um, and there's not a lot of people knows about this, uh, but it's available. And uh, I'm not gonna talk about it, um, uh, but if you care to know, it's called uh, private lending. Uh, for disclaimer, I'm not, I did not make this thing up, and I'm not gonna teach you how to be uh, creative, but I'm gonna give you a little bit of a hint, okay? So if I have a, a RSP, you have your own uh, RSP, I borrow yours, you borrow mine, and you can figure it out, okay? So you get the point. Right. Um, uh, closing costs. Uh, there are uh, two things to uh, remember when you, uh, whenever you want to buy uh, a house. If you buy a house in in uh, Toronto, there's always going to be two land transfer tax. Outside Toronto, one. Okay. 
Um, you can also get a rebate up to four, 4K for being a first time home. Um, so the closing, you have a lawyer, home inspection and land transfer taxes. I'm gonna talk to you guys more about this after, okay? Um, now, number three, let's talk about what's happening in the, in the market. Um, as you guys know, uh, 2020 is a bull market. Um, now, uh, some people is, is saying, what's triggering this bull uh, market? Um, there are a lot of myths about this um, that uh, uh, some, some people are saying that it's because of the foreign, in, foreign investors. But what we see in the field, there are two things that is uh, triggering it. One is immigration. And number two is the government not opening the land to be developed. So before the, the, the pandemic, there are a lot of, uh, there are a lot of people, uh, immigrants that is coming in this country, especially in, a, in a Toronto. If you look at the 2019 uh, census, the top countries that are coming in here are basically India, China, and the Philippines, okay? Uh, India, they send a lot of uh, um, mostly like technology uh, like workers. Um, China, they send us uh, like students, uh, their parents buy a home and sometimes uh, buy cash. And after they, uh, they uh, graduate, uh, they go back home or, or stay here they sell their house and they, they uh, move on. So they're, they're about 50-50, okay? Now, the Philippines. Now, what's interesting about the uh, Philippines is, is that the Philippines, we are basically uh, westernized, okay? Uh, back in the days, uh, they used to send, the Philippines uh, used to send a, care, a caregivers, which belongs to the uh, lower tier of, uh, of uh, lower income. But lately, they are now sending skilled workers ranging from healthcare to technology, engineers, IT. Um, and some of them, they, they, they cross country from other countries uh, such as uh, Middle East, Dubai, that already have money. So right off the bat, um, they, co uh, they contribute to the, uh, to, to the uh, real estate boom. So as you all know, like we are Filipino, we always have this thing, uh, like exciting. We have a couscous there, couscous there. Uh, here and there, you, you know, uh, and uh, these these people, um, uh, they work very hard, and it would take them pro probably about five to ten years to get into into home uh, like ownership. Um, so that's what's it's fueling the uh, real estate market. On the flip side, we have uh, millennials. Uh, uh, millennials is a uh, very smart people, sophisticated. As as the baby boomers exit. Uh, millennials is now they're passing their money to uh, millennials. So instead of these millennials buying cars, they would put it into a real estate. So uh, that's what's also um, uh, contributing to the uh, real estate boom. So regardless if there's a pandemic, there's no pa a pandemic, there are always going to be a demand, right? So here's my prediction for next year. Okay, uh, there's a possibility that I could be wrong. Uh, there's 80% chance that I could be. Uh, right, uh, right on track. So here's my uh, predictions. Providing that the government does not intervene in the, uh, in the, um, in the uh, housing market, uh, that uh, next year will be another bull market. What might change is the condo market because of the uh, students, uh, of the uh, Chinese students not being able to start a school. Uh, uh, there might be a possibility that uh, we might get into a secondary shutdown, uh, but it will have a less impact when it comes to a real estate market. So places like Oshawa are now becoming the uh, wide, wild west. They're now becoming uh, Toronto. And the good place for you to buy right now is basically Durham, Oshawa. Okay. So that's about what's happening in the, in the uh, real estate market. And uh, lastly, what is it that I do? Um, I am a realtor, just, just like what I said. I have a website, uh, www.alexmacali.ca, where you can uh, search uh, my information and find home live on like, MLS. And, I, and, um, and if, you have, uh, if you need that information, for example, how to calculate the land transfer tax, uh, uh, a mortgage is also on my website, which I'm going to show it to you. I am a realtor that's specialized within the Filipino community and I have helped many people in the community. Many of those are first time home buyer that have thought that home um, ownership is not uh, possible. So I, do, so I understand what they're going through and the uh, challenges that they face and I can relate with them. So uh, those are the ones that I truly, truly, truly want to, to help. Um, since uh, day one, I, I structured my uh, business philosophy to work uh, with one goal and that is for you to be happy with the help that I provide that you gladly introduce me to your friends and your family. And having said that, 
Um, I, I believe in open door uh, policy, so you can uh, uh, check out my work. I don't expect you to believe in everything that I say, but you can uh, uh, check out my name uh, on uh, Google or uh, YouTube or by going to my website at alexmacari.com. And, and Alex, are you then, able to put up a business card or, or sure, pull yeah, up the I'm website for right a second? Now. Sure. Perfect. Because uh, you, you have the power. I made you host. Okay, okay. I'm just trying to uh, figure Guys, out Guys, be bear with him. He is like me. He's not very used to using technology through Zoom. Him so more than me. How do I do this now? Uh, go to share, go to green share button, the, share screen. The, bottom. the green button. The bottom with the arrow. <laughs> to share screen. You click it and you look at the one that... <laughs> If you want, I can pull up your website if you sure, want. Yeah, just go into. Okay. Uh, you uh, have to sign me back, host. Click on my name, remember? Click on more and make me the host again. Uh, Michael Kosabian. Make your host, okay? Perfect. Okay. So, yeah, if you go into um, alexmacali.ca and if you could just uh, pull it up for me. Uh, of course. I'll show you where to get all this information. Alex McCauley. Alex McCauley. That's C A. Okay. Why is this thing here blocking me? There we go. Get this out of here. There we go. There we go. You guys can see it. Yeah. yeah. So, Michael, if you can go into a menu. Okay. Yeah. So all these uh, uh, property are basically live. So these are if you're looking for home. It's on my uh, website, and you can scroll through it from condo to house and, uh, and everything like that. So if you go to a, a buying section, right? Um, oh, there's a calculators, um, all the stuff. This is so good. Like that, I click on it. I click on that. Yeah. So as you oh, can wow. see here, there's a calculator, there's a mortgage, uh, a calculator, there's a mortgage. Uh, 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 a Alex, who built your website? This is very nice. Um, I got some guy from uh, that. Uh, 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 that's this one, uh, this uh, uh, website. So, um, so, and um, yeah, so all the information is all there. Um, and, and you can check, check me out too. If you Google my name um, on, uh, uh, on the uh, Google search, I'm, I'm pretty sure that my name would uh, come up and, and yeah. And if, if you have any questions at all, you know, feel, feel free to call me and to contact me. Again, I specialize within the Filipino uh, community, and I have uh, many Filipino uh, uh, people. If you go into uh, uh, the the um, other website, it's called alexmacali.com, not not that ca dot com. How did you get both of these, man? Look at this; got both domains. Can you guys yeah. see the other one? Yeah. So these are the uh, people that I have helped. So I'm pretty sure that, that you may uh, recognize any of these people. So you can just watch them, uh, like read about uh, what these guys um, is all about. So, and- uh, Oh, look at this. Th this this first couple here, Danilo and Jomeli Mayo, first time home buyers in the height of the pandemic. Yeah, so uh, there's a lot of those. And I have a lot more that I still haven't um, uh, touched on. Um, so I still have to update that uh, website. So yeah, so that's pretty much what I do. And if you guys have any questions about uh, real estate, I'm here. Um, you can ask me a question, preparations, all kinds Alex, of stuff. Alex, I just have a, I just have a question. Sure. Um, the first question is when someone's out of a bankruptcy or a consumer proposal, right? you have, um, I guess, like a brochure, certain criteria or certain things that you would kind of guide them sure. uh, with, of saying, you know, because their first instinct is, okay, I just finished a bankruptcy, I'm out of debt, I want a house. Or I right. finished a yes, yeah, yes. I need to buy a house. Right. Right? So that's one of the things, aside from investment vehicles or financing a car or all that other kind of stuff, mm -hmm. um, is there some guides or some information that maybe you can... Um, sure. You know, I could put it up for you. Yeah. That, just something, just so I can even... Because we have, you know, um, we have seven offices and we have all people and, right. we, and we are very also big. Uh, we're very big in the Filipino community. Perfect. Uh, yeah. Filipino, yeah. But uh, we have someone that works in our office, uh, Corey Naren. 
Yeah. Um, we're in, I uh, believe that's Aliba, Filipino mm. Quarter. Um, so we're heavily also in the Filipino community. So that's mm. good that I'll also connect your name. And I'm sure. Sure, absolutely. Here. And I, it's pretty good because uh, like our problem with the um, applying with the uh, mortgage is when they have the R. R9, when they have on the file. So these are the things that we go through all the time. And we don't know when is it going to last and uh, who, who to uh, 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 talk to, um, how to get rid of it, right? Because um, I think it, it lasts for about three or four, uh, uh, three or four years. If, or if well, you know, an R9 bankruptcy will last you seven years. So those are the ones that we go through all the time um, with the, uh, because I have a lot of Filipino client that just couldn't move because of this. Uh, the down payment uh, wise, we could find a ways around it. Uh, when it comes to uh, to uh, job, like we always can find a ways around this. But the thing that is stalling us is basically your credit score. score. Because as long as, if you're in the 650 or below, you're done, you're toast. You, there, is no, there is no lender that would give you unless you go into a, a a private mortgage what's a private mortgage going to charge you is about 12 13 14 15 yeah. <laughs> percent see gonna i spit think in the water. i think i can be the perfect bridge between the two of you right. jason you can help fix people who have gone too far down the rabbit hole and yeah. who need a way out but then i can get them i can get them back to alex in a in a situation where they're capable uh to then buy a house because their credit is back up again Correct. So that's yes. what I'm actually doing with one of Eva's friends is I'm actually helping with one of Eva's friends to get back on her two feet so she can go see Alex. And I think Definitely. this is exciting. So I'm glad I got both of you on at the same time because the three of us together, we can actually help people. Correct. Yeah. yeah Especially no, with, the, uh, uh, with the RSP, there's so many ways that you could do with RSP. From first time home buyer, a secondary home, you could use this. Uh, you, you just have to be like a little bit more uh, like created uh, with it, right? Because uh, uh, people thought that it's only can be used for first time home, home buyers. But in uh, reality, you could use it for secondary home work. That I didn't know, that's interesting. Yes. And these are, uh, it's available, but uh, people that just doesn't know about this. Hmm. Yeah, no, I think it's very good information. I think like Mike said, um, you know, we have, a lot of clients that are in and out of bankruptcy, you know, quite often that need that, you know, to get, you know, a house. And then I have a great mortgage contact as well. I'm sure you do. And I'm sure Mike, you do as well. Uh, but another thing is like a lot of people say, okay, well, you know, I couldn't really save in bankruptcy or I have, I'm making payments in the proposal. Now I want to build up the cash, build up, build up an RSP, have right. life in so I think it's also good, Mike, that you know you can get some information um, our way, like of a bro my way or wh whatever uh, of a brochure or something of guidelines. If you're out of bankruptcy or if you're out of consumer proposal, here's some easy steps: as one, two, three, of get a TFSA. Do you right. know what? I'm the next. The next time we have one of these presentations, I'm going to come up with a, a checklist that'll get them from where I was two years ago when I paid off my last payment. That was a nice big chunk. I brought, I think I brought you guys $17,000 to pay all at once. Um, yeah. <laughs> is that how much it is? <laughs> oh no, I owed 30,000 Alex, but I paid $17,000 in one payment because I wanted to clear it out because I wanted to start rebuilding my credit. The oh, wow. sooner you can ca cash out a credit proposal and pay off the last payment is the day your, your clock starts ticking for that three years to be free and clear. Oh, wow. Yeah, oh, I, I think that. a lot of misconception as well, Mike, is like, do I have to wait until the proposal's done? Yeah, that's to that's get true. credit. That's when well, no, you got to start rebuilding it. You got to start rebuilding it right away, right, Jason? Yeah. So, like, you can file the proposal now, and then a month from now, as long as you're financially okay, obviously, um, you can get a secured credit card, Capital One or Home Trust or Horizon Plus, one of those companies where you give a security deposit and they um, essentially give you credit for your deposit. 
I'm As okay with Capital One, but not Home Trust. They're blood suckers. <laughs> okay, then Capital One, Home Trust. Forget <laughs> Home Trust. <laughs> you know what? If if once in a while you leave a small balance to show up on your credit card, that's fine. Mm. But I'm I'm always going to start with the practice, a good practice, which is to advise everybody. You make a purchase on your credit card, you transfer money on your online banking to pay it off right away. Oh yeah. Yes, every once in a while you should run a balance for the for the credit card statement. Mm -hmm. But if you if you don't catch yourself, and this has happened to me, my credit card went up from zero to nine thousand in two months, mm -hmm. just because I was only making fifty dollar payment, hundred dollar payment. I wasn't watching. I I bought this. I bought that. In two months, nine thousand dollars, and then you're looking down the barrel of a nine thousand dollar credit card debt, and you know the monthly payment on that is about a hundred and ninety dollars a month. If wow. you're at 10,000, it's $200 a month. That's a lot of money to make just an in interest alone, guys. It's very Forget insidious. Even the principal. <laughs> Forget even the principal, guys. That's just the interest alone. In fact, Jay, when I first met you, I was paying $1,500 a month in interest. Can you imagine that? $1,500 a month interest, Alex. Now, Eva, can you imagine paying $1,500 a month to different organizations just for interest alone? Okay. That's a mortgage for it. That's a mortgage, guys. <laughs> That's a mortgage. Yeah. It's a mortgage. So let, let's help each other. Let's help our friends. Jason can help them if they're too far in debt already. I can help them if they're not in debt or even if they're recovering from the debt so they can get to Alex and be able to get a house because I'm not a real estate professional. I don't pretend to know the markets. He knows all the tricks to get you into that house. Guys, this is a very, very crazy market we live in here in the GTA. If you look if at Oshawa you, now, by the time it gets eh? listed today, the how um, so um, Oshawa will become the next Markham. So that's where it's uh, projecting the next year. It will become worse. That's crazy. Sorry, guys. So um, I want to open up the floor. Does anybody have any questions for any of us? Please feel free to unmute your line uh, and ask us any questions, guys. I think people are shy. Eva's not shy. I know Eva's not shy. And I think Eva, your friend Sheila's on the line, right? It's not a muting. I don't know her. Her microphone's not working. It's okay. There, now. It goes. there it is. We can hear you. Go ahead, Eva. Oh, uh, she's there's a question actually. A house. Uh, Alex, there's do you a have any questions for Alex or for for Jay? Uh, Shirley just asked me. I I just didn't uh, realize it. Uh, he said that do you need to finish the credit proposal before you buy a house? So these are the uh, question. The answer is yes. <laughs> Because no lender would touch you without any proposal or if you have a small dent on your uh, credit, if you have the R, R9, there's no lender will touch you. you um, so well, I think like the private lenders, the private, private lenders, lender, yes, yes. Yeah, like obviously like if, you're, if your credit's not good or you're in debt and things like that and you want to clean it up, Mm -hmm. A good way could be potentially filing a proposal and then making, you know, buying a house is a long-term goal. Um, like Alex said, you're not going to be going to a lender, the lender. You're not going to go to TD and get like a two percent interest rate, but you may be able to go to like, you know, uh, one of those private lenders and pay four or five or six percent. But it gets you in the market it gets you a mortgage and then shortly after that after i would say maybe a couple of years then you'll be able to get back into you know the a lending market but um, so um I don't um so here's so uh, uh, here's what happened right so when uh, whenever you you have a debt on your uh, mortgage or your uh, credit um on the first year yes you may be be able to but you got to be careful if you have a big amount of uh of a mortgage there is you know it's impossible for you to catch up uh, just on the interest rate alone because i do a private mortgage too just to let you know michael uh if you do oh i didn't know that yeah i i mean not in a bigger scale but you know uh 80 100 you know like, like these are the things that i could do right providing that uh there's an equity in the in the property um so loan uh, like loan to value about 80 85 percent like loan to value so these are the the uh, things too that if you do come across if people need to get into a, a secondary home um and you can do a lot more with this uh private uh, uh mortgage just like what uh, jay is uh saying 
Interesting. So that's how you have that way around getting into that second house. You have uh, access to some private uh, mm -hmm. private lending, correct? Yeah. So so you buy your your uh, first house and then you use your your equity and of course with uh, connections. I mean, like everybody knows this, right? You know, not every. If you go to uh, like Royal Bank, uh, they actually come, they come to us and they uh, and they teach us how how the file works because uh, like everybody needs to make money, right? So, uh, so even some of the major banks are approaching you privately. Even, uh, I have access to a Royal Bank, TD Bank, any bank you want. I love it. Right. So these these guys they they love to come like uh, to come to us and say, hey, uh, you know. If you have deals, I you know look, look, we can do this for you. You know, so these are the things that that now see, Jason, that won't happen to you or me because we're not in the real estate industry. But because, but Eva, if you walk in off the street to TD Bank, they're gonna laugh you. You know, Sheila and Olive. If you try to walk into RBC Bank, we're gonna do the same thing. They're gonna laugh at you. Go, we don't have any deals for you. But because Alex has built up a reputation, they know who he is. They approach him and say, "Bring us the people. We'll give them deals." Mm -hmm. That's so awesome. There's, there's That's another question. Uh, April, uh, he says, I have a question for you regarding the credit scores. When a couple is buying a property, what if one has an excellent and one has a fair score? Uh, I'm not sure what that means, the fair score. How does that impact the uh, buyer? Well, both she probably means below 650 is the other one. Yeah, so it cannot be uh, used. So, so, one, so if there's two, like whoever's... Um, bad it cannot be used so, so there's only one person that can be used for the application if that's if that's making any sense so i basically think that means we have to fix that other person april so Correct. if one has yes. got the good credit score and the other one is not so good i'll show them the techniques to get their credit score up over the next six to 12 months so they can come to alex and get, he'll find a way to get them into the down payment get them into the house avoid all the bidding wars because right. you, you mentioned the bidding wars are the killer right yeah, everybody. Like, I go through every day, 15, 20 line. I'm in the uh, bidding war. So you got to wow. be like really creative how to get into the, uh, the uh, seller, how to win into a uh, bidding war. So if you have the, uh, the uh, financing, um, all the conditions, uh, throw it out because <laughs> you're not going to go through. Uh, let me see. I think there's one more question that just came up. Uh, oh, April's got to go. April, thank you so much for being here. Uh, same with Simon, uh, Simon, who is in Montreal, by the way. Uh, he was here with us. Um, any other questions? Uh, I, I want to wrap this up because I know it's been a long day for everybody. And definitely want to thank Alex and, and Jason again. We've been here thank for you, 90 Mikey. minutes. I think we've covered a lot of topics. We'll, would you guys like this again, by the way? Because we can go into some more topics. If you guys can get back to me or to them on things that you would like us to cover, we'll, we'll do our investigations for you. Uh, you have extra questions, examples, situations, and scenarios. Um, we, we we can actually do that for you guys. Is that fair? Sure. Or or uh, if you guys want, um, if if there are people out there that is uh, is actually not ready to buy but actually thinking, uh, you know, feel uh, feel free to ask me your questions. I don't discriminate people that you know that cannot afford to buy a house. Now I I would I'd be more willing to. I walk through you guys. Um, uh, what are the uh, process? How to go around it? How to you know what the uh, preparation is? So always feel uh, I feel free to uh, uh, give me a shout by call or by text or send me uh, uh, whatever through my uh, uh, website at alexmacali.ca. I think the host went. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and same same with me, guys. If you have questions, anything about debts, or you're not sure what to do, or your situation, or you have a friend that's in a, a little bit of a pickle, by all means, uh, no, you know, no questions. A stupid question, like just ask, right. and I'll be more than happy to help guide you. Whether like like um, Alex is saying, is it whether it's a file, not a file, just to help guide you through the process. Um, you know, uh, uh, I'm here. Company. Are you cutting out again? For you guys as well too. So I know. Any other? Yeah. So thank thank you guys both again. We'll do this again. I I, I love this. Um, any feedback, guys? You can pass it on directly to them. Mm -hmm. I, their their numbers are both available. <laughs> Instagram at Filipino Realtor. <laughs> you follow I me. I like that. <laughs> Shameless. 
<laughs> Jay, do you have a, do you have an Instagram? You should have one. <laughs> we we have our company has one, but I don't personally. I don't have a personal one, so I think Alex is up one up on us. I'm gonna start an Instagram. I, I'm I'm a little bit Facebook, envious now. Facebook, Instagram, add me. <laughs>